Let's look at um, how our economic forecasts um, will affect our allocation internationally. And then let's take a deeper, more detailed look at uh, how the U.S. economy is set up. So let's look at economic forecasting and global asset allocation. How do we spread our money into different countries? We've already done a little bit of talking about this. But let's talk first a little bit about correlation. There is some correlation between the economies of various countries. Okay? Typically, the hemispheres will move together. America, Mexico, and um, Canada tend to move together. Latin America tends to move uh, through its own cycles. Asia tends to move uh, through its own cycles, very low correlation between the Northern Hemisphere and um, Asia, and um, there's some closer correlation between the Northern Hemisphere and the Eurozone, okay? So there is some correlations, and the correlations are, are different around the world, okay? But there are significant differences in government policies, really in economic systems, and then with government policies, and in the timing and in the magnitude of the business cycle in various countries. Every country experiences their own unique business cycle, but there is some integration of the world economy, so what's going on in America will affect the Eurozone, and what's going on in the Eurozone will affect uh, uh, Asia, so there is some correlation. So it is worthwhile to analyze the economies of countries to determine how attractive they are in terms of investments. When should we be overweight? When should we be underweight? For example, if a country is going into a recession, it's probably a good candidate for bond investors Okay, going into a recession. This is because interest rates will likely be at a high level and these rates will probably begin to decline in the near future as the central bankers know that they've done their job in slowing the economy down and now they will start to ease Money, on the money supply, they'll start to put more money in and interest rates will start to come down and bond prices will go up. Similarly, countries that are coming out of a recession are probably good candidates for stock investors. This is because profits and dividends will be picking up. As countries are coming out of recession, you have an economic recovery and profits uh, will begin picking up, as will dividends. Well, and dividends are farther down the road probably in the um, overheating phase where dividends really start to pick up. Uh, and the required rate of return starts to drop. So how do the major uh, components of the valuation equation, cash flows and discount rate, in which direction are they moving? All right, with that in mind, let's look at the U.S. economy, some more specifics about the U.S. economy. So let's start at the top with gross domestic product, GDP. What is it? This is the sum total of the goods and services produced within a nation's border. We are trying to measure the value of everything we produce, okay, everything we sell. There are five major components or categories of GDP. Michael Cox, an economist, was here two weeks ago, and he talked about the fact that our, the old economic metrics or measures like gross domestic domestic product are having a difficult time capturing the value of new technologies. The standard of living is going up and the cost is going down and it looks like our economy is not doing quite as well when in fact we as people are doing very well. The measures, the old measures of economic activity need to be updated to capture what's going on in our economy. All right. So let's look at the five major components of GDP. The first is consumption, then we have investment, government spending, exports, and imports. Okay? C, consumption, plus I, plus G, plus E, minus I. You learned that in macroeconomics. All right, so let's take a look at consumption. Well, consumption is roughly 67% of U.S. GDP. It's much lower in other economies after World War II. The 
The U.S. government decided that they really wanted to turn the U.S. economy into a consumption-driven economy, and guess what's happening in China now? The very same thing. Okay? It is, this is what households and consumers spend money on. Consumption. What we buy to live. It has three major components. First, durable goods, like cars and appliances. We spend money on things that last for multiple periods of time. Then, non-durable things like food and drugs, services like health care, accounting and law, and financial assistance. Here we go. Hire Dr. E. Also, things like restaurants, okay, non-durables and services. Okay, so we've got durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. These are the three major components of consumption. Notice that housing is not in there. We'll, we'll take a look at housing in just a second. All right. Durable spending is sensitive to interest rates. Interest rates affect the cost of durable goods, uh, principally cars, okay? And uh, interest rates affect consumer sentiment, and interest rates affect income. And so durable spending will go up during an expansion, and durable spending will really go down hard during a recession, okay? So understanding what affects durable spending and understanding the patterns and what they're related to helps you understand when to be in those stocks and when not to be in those stocks. So you buy the stocks of durables at the beginning of economic recoveries. You sell durables when it looks like the economy is beginning to falter. Okay? So if you want to be active in your portfolio, these are the things that you do. All right. The level of spending on non-durables does not respond to changes in interest rates. Interest rates do not affect what you spend on food and health care. Okay? However, consumers often move to lower price points when economic times are tough. So when times are good, you want to own the Nordstrom's. When times are bad, you want to own the Dollar General and Family Dollars and Walmarts. Okay? Staples, which are non-durable items, outperform in recessions, the stocks of non-durables, and underperform in expansions. We've talked about that before. All right, now we have investments. So we've looked at consumption, 67% of our economy, consumption. Now let's look at investment. Investment consists of money that is spent by business on plant, equipment, and inventory. So these items are investment items. When, when businesses spend, spend to build a plant, when they spend to buy equipment, and computer equipment and hardware is part of that, and when they build their inventory, they are spending money, and that is captured as part of GDP. And money spent by consumers on housing, this is where housing comes into play, which can be single family and multifamily. Single family, it's a house. Multifamily, it's an apartment. Okay? Business spending is greatly influenced by the expected growth rate of the economy. So businesses spend when they expect the economy to do well, okay? and by interest rates. These things affect business spending. Tax incentives from Congress and the IRS will help stimulate business spending. And then competition. Bus businesses respond to competition by spending more to become more efficient. So these things impact business spending. All right, now we have government. So we have consumption and we have investment. And again, investment, so consumption is durables, non-durables, and services. And then investment is property, plant, and equipment, and housing. Okay? Then we have government spending, three components of government spending. Federal government, state government, and local government. Three levels of taxation as well. Okay? The federal government spending is by far the largest component. Okay? In 2015, the federal budget was $3.9 trillion. The overall economy was about $11 trillion. About 40% of that was the federal budget. That's a lot. Maybe it's higher. Maybe, no, I think that's about right. But we can't we can have 40% federal budget uh, of federal government spending. And 67%, um, and that's too high. We'll take a look. Let's keep going through so, oh, there we go. I was wrong with the GDP. I was way too low. I, I knew that didn't sound right. So U.S. GDP was $18 trillion. 21% of that was the federal government. All right. I just need to go one more uh, sentence. 
All right, what are the largest component of federal government spending? Guess at that. Did you get it right? Let's see. First, Social Security. 1.3 trillion of the 3.9 trillion, so about a third of federal government spending is on a program that was created in 1945. Okay? Then we have Medicare. That's medical spending, okay, for the elderly, uh, about one trillion. Okay, so two welfare programs, Social Security and Medicare, two redistribution programs, that's two trillion out of the four trillion. So half of our budget goes to those two welfare programs. Okay? Then defense. Now people are all been out of shape. The liberals get been out of shape. We're spending money on too much money on defense and not enough money on welfare. Well, we, half the budget goes to welfare, and about, um, let's see, that would be six out of four, so about 12% goes to defense. Half goes to a welfare, and about, uh, so 50% goes to welfare, 12% goes to defense, okay? Those are the, the major areas of spending um, in the federal government. All right, now let's look at exports. About $1.6 in exports to the U.S., uh, sent out about 1.6 trillion out of 18 trillion, about 2 trillion out of 18 trillion. That's, so that's one night, which is about 11 percent of the economy exports. Okay, so Trump is working on increasing our exports. He wants China to open their market. Our market is wide open. China's market is not as wide open. And so Trump says, let's have a level playing field, China. If you want to sell in the United States, then we need to be able to sell in China. Let's be fair about this. Of course, they're comp those are complicated issues. The U.S. is not always right. China is not always wrong. All right. Um, what affects exports? Well, growth rates. If the United States is growing fast, okay, then we tend to import more than we export. If China is growing fast, then China will import from us more than they export to us. That's the theory. Inflation. Countries that have higher inflation tend to import more. Okay. Exchange rates. Okay. The value of our currencies. Governments tend to try to influence by putting cash in or taking cash out into the currency markets. And exchange rates have a big impact on our imports and our exports, what we call our trading balance. And then lastly, the ability of companies to understand the needs of foreign markets. If you want to sell in a foreign market, you better understand your customers. Okay? And government policies pertaining to trade. And again, as I mentioned, that's a big thing that we're talking about now in 2018. The negotiation between the U.S. and China and the U.S. and Europe and the U.S. and Canada and the U.S. and Mexico are the rules of trade. Okay? Let's make sure that trading is as free as it can be. Let's make sure that trading is as fair as it can be. Okay? So before you start pontificating, you liberals, about trade, you better get your facts straight. Let's make sure that, that if we're going to have free trade, that the United States is not the only free trader out there where we let people import into up uh, to export to the United States, but then they won't allow us to export to them. Let's have Fair trading, okay? You bleeding heart liberals. Let's have fair trading. All right, top exports by the U.S., manufacturing equipment, motors and pumps, electronic equipment, oil, vehicles, air, and spacecraft. These are the main things that we sent overseas, and the things that we imported, um, uh, same things, similar. It's a different mix of items, but the same kinds of things. What are imports? Money spent on products made outside of the domestic economy that are purchased by domestic consumers. So the U.S. tends to import more than it exports. China most definitely exports more than it imports. At some point, the Chinese government will be successful in converting China into a more consumption-driven economy, and exports uh, will, from uh, the U.S. to China will grow as a result. All right, let's see how far are we supposed to go with this. Oh, caught at just the right moment, so we're going to take a breather, and then we'll move on. Until then, shalom. Peace.